kids how are you all i hope you all must be fine right so today we are going to read about class 4 science olympiad and in class 4 science olympiad which chapter we are going to read we are going to read about the chapter that is matter okay so are you all ready for it yes so let's get started here the first question is if a perfume stick is lit in a corner of a room then its smell can be observed at other corner of the room what can be concluded from it option a room produces perfume when a perfume stick is lit in a corner corner b all the air present in room gives perfume c perfumes do not spread from one place to another d all gases including perfumes have the property of spreading from one place to other so here the question is asked if a perfume stick it is lit in a corner of a room then its smell can be observed at other corner of the room so what can we conclude from it uh, we know when we lit the perfume stick or when we spray the perfume in one corner of the room we can smell it in the other corner of the room right yes so what is the reason why this is happening it is happening because all the gases including the perfumes okay all the gases including the perfumes they have the property of spreading from one place to another that's why they can spread from one corner of the room to the other corner of the room so these are the property of the gas particles okay these are the property of the gas particles so here the correct answer is option d got it everyone coming to the next question akshay prepared salty water by adding some salt in water what is the solvent here option a salt b water c salty water d all of these so here uh, what akshay has done akshay has prepared salty water by adding salt in water so what he has taken he has taken salt and added the salt to water and when the salt it is mixed with water we know salt is completely dissolved in water right and when they dissolve it forms salty water so uh, here see first thing which is present in smaller amount we know salt is present in smaller amount and water is present in larger amount right so uh, which is present in smaller amount we call it as solute so solute that is present in the smaller amount okay next one which is present in larger amount here water is present in larger amount and which is present in larger amount we call them as solvent okay and the other thing that is salt is dissolved in water we know that salt is dissolved in water right so we can say that solute that is dissolved in solvent okay so here what is the correct answer it is asked what is the solvent so which one is the solvent yes here water is the solvent right so correct answer is option b that is water coming to the next question what is the solute in sugar water mixture so in sugar water mixture what we take we take sugar and we mix it with water right and this sugar and water uh, when we mix it is forming the sugar water the mixture so what is present in smaller amount that is sugar right so sugar is present in the smaller amount we will call it as solute and water is present in the larger amount we will call it as solvent and when the solute it is dissolved in the solvent then the solution is formed okay then the solution is formed so the correct answer what is the solute in sugar water mixture yes what is the solute that is the sugar why because it is present in the smaller amount okay 
So correct answer is option A that is sugar. Coming to the next question. Solids, sugar, salt, iron, liquid, water, petrol, milk, gas, steam, oxygen, kerosene. Which of the following is placed in wrong group? So, solid, we know sugar is solid, salt is solid, iron is solid, right? Coming to the liquid part, water is liquid, petrol is liquid, milk is also liquid. Coming to the gas, steam is liquid, oh, sorry, gas, oxygen is gas, kerosene, it is not gas, right? Why? Because kerosene is in the liquid state. So, which of the following is placed in the wrong group? Yes, you can answer now here. Petro, uh, sorry, kerosene, it is present in the wrong group, right? It should be placed in the liquid Yes? Coming to the next question, a student took an unknown substance into a beaker. The substance took the shape of the beaker. Later, he transformed the substance into a measuring cylinder. The substance took the shape of the cylinder, but its volume remained the same. What is the state of the substance? So, a student took an unknown substance into a beaker and the substance took the shape of the beaker. It is taking the shape of the beaker. That means it is having indefinite shape, right? It has not, uh, it does not possess a fixed shape. It is taking the shape of the container. Later, he transferred the substance into a measuring cylinder. Okay, when he is transferring it into the measuring cylinder, the substance to the shape of the cylinder. But its volume remains the same. So, indefinite shape and definite or fixed volume. So, definite volume, indefinite shape, this is the property of liquid. So, what will be the correct answer? The correct answer that is what is the state of the substance that is option C liquid state. Okay. Coming to the next question. Ice kept in a beaker can be converted to water often. Option A cooling, B heating, C evaporation, <coughs> D condensation. So, we know that ice it can be converted into water. How ice can be converted into water? Can you answer? When we heat, then ice is converted into water. So, here the correct answer is option B, that is heating. But it? Yes, by heating, the ice kept in a beaker, it can be converted into water. Okay? Yes. Coming to the next question. To obtain water from the water paper, we should dash the water paper. Option A, heat. B, evaporate. C, condense. D, do nothing. So, to obtain water from the water paper. That means we want to convert water paper into water. Right. So, water paper, it is present in gaseous state and water, it is present in the liquid state and the process in which gas is converted to the uh, liquid state that is known as condensation. Okay. That is known as condensation. And when we cool, um, then gas that can be converted into the liquid state. So, here the correct answer is option C that is contents. Got it everyone? Coming to the next question, which of the following is wrong? Option A, solid when heated gives liquid. Option B, solid when cooled gives gas. C, liquid when cooled gives solid. D, liquid when heated gives gas. So, we know that solid when heated it gives rise to liquid. Solid on cooling give rise to gas. No, it is wrong. When we heat, when we heat, solid is converted to liquid state. On further heating, it is converted into gaseous state. So, uh, the option B, that is wrong. Coming to liquid when cooled, it is converted to solid state. This is correct. Liquid when heated, it is converted into gaseous state. This is also correct. So, here the correct answer is option B, right? Coming to the next question, 
Name the solutes which are soluble in water. A. Sand and sugar. B. Sand and salt. C. Salt and kerosene. D. Sugar and salt. So, name the solutes which are soluble in water. So, which substances are soluble in water? You have some idea, right? Sand is soluble in water. No. Sugar. Yes. Sand is soluble in water. No. Salt. Yes. Salt is soluble in water. Yes. Kerosene. No. Sugar is soluble in butter. Yes, salt is also soluble in butter. That's why the correct answer is option D. Got it everyone? Yes. Coming to the next question. Which of the following is insoluble substance in butter? We have to find out which of the following is insoluble in butter. Option A, kerosene. B, sugar. C, salt. D, oxygen. So, kerosene, is it soluble in butter? No, it is not soluble in water. Sugar, it is soluble in water. Salt is also soluble in water. Oxygen is also soluble in water. Right? Yes. So, correct answer is option A. That is kerosene. Coming to the next question. Which of the following is the gaseous substance that get dissolved in water? Option A. Sugar in water. B. Water in kerosene. C. Sand in kerosene. D. Oxygen in water. In the question, it is asked which of the following is the gaseous substance that gets dissolved in water. So, in water here, kerosene is there, right? So, it is not going to be our answer. In water, sugar in water, yes. Sugar is dissolved in water, but sugar is solid. Oxygen is water, yes. Oxygen also dissolved in water. And oxygen, it is present in the gaseous state. So, it is asked gaseous substance dissolve in water. So, the correct answer is option D, that is oxygen in water. You know oxygen is dissolved in water. That's how the aquatic um, animals, uh, when they are present inside the water, they take on um, this dissolved oxygen from water. Okay? Yes. Coming to the next question, identify the substance that does not get dissolved in water. Option A, sand, B, oxygen, C, water, D, sugar. So, we have to identify the substance that does not get dissolved in water. Sand, is it dissolved in water? No. Oxygen, yes. Water is dissolved in water. It does not sound uh, good, right? Uh, but uh, yes, uh, it is mixed with water, right? Of course, both are same thing. So, water, it can be mixed with water. Sugar, yes, it is also dissolved in water. So, which one is not dissolved in water? That is option A, sand. Okay. Coming to the next question. Which of the following processes involves a decrease in intermolecular force between the molecules? Option A, condensation, B, crystallization, C, evaporation, D, all of these. So, we have to find out where there is decrease in intermolecular force between the molecules. So, intermolecular force, <coughs> that is the force of attraction which exists between the particles of the matter. It is maximum in case of solid followed by liquid followed by gas. So, it is maximum in solid, then liquid, then gas. Condensation here, gas is converted to liquid. Okay. Then in um, crystallization, uh, it, from, it is dissolved in the um, liquid. Okay. And from that, it is converted into the solid state. Solid is crystallized Evaporation here, liquid is converted into the gaseous state. So, decrease in intermolecular force. So, decrease in intermolecular force means that means it should be solid into liquid or liquid into gas. So, liquid into gas here intermolecular force is decreasing, right? So, here the correct answer is option C that is evaporation. So, solid they have maximum force of attraction and gases they have the particles they have minimum force of attraction. Okay. Yes. Coming to the next question. A student took 20 ml of water in a beaker and dissolved 2 teaspoon of sugar in it. When he checked the volume, the volume remained the same. 
can you give the reason option a sugar did not actually dissolve in water b sugar evaporated c sugar occupied the empty spaces in between the molecules of water d sugar has zero volume okay so here the student take 20 ml of water in a beaker and dissolve 2 teaspoon of sugar in it when he check the volume volume remain the same why volume remain the same because the sugar it is completely dissolved in water okay so when sugar is completely dissolved in water that means we know the particles of the matter they have empty spaces between them yes so the sugar it takes place the empty spaces present between the water okay so the sugar particles yes what they do they occupy the empty spaces which is present in between the water particles so correct answer is option c sugar occupied the empty spaces in between the molecules of water got it coming to the next question we can separate sand from water by option a filtration b boiling c evaporation d all of these so we can separate sand from water by filtration so if you take a filter paper or something and and when you um, pour this so what will happen the sand it will um, remain on the filter paper and water is separated so filtration yes it can be the answer boiling when we give heat what will happen when we give heat the water that will be converted into water vapor no water will be left and we will get the sand right sand cannot be converted into vapor okay so boiling also it can be the answer evaporation we know uh, if we are not heating and under the sunlight uh, means uh, automatically this water it is converted into water vapor right and when all the water will be converted into water vapor no water will be there and we are left with the sand only so in this way also sand can be separated from water right that's why the correct answer is option d that is all of this got it everyone yes so this much for today session let's meet you in the next session okay so till then read mindfully meet you soon bye bye everyone